name is Joshua Brody. I am the director of the Lymphoma Immunotherapy Program here at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai uh, and the Tisch Cancer Institute here in beautiful uh, New York, New York. Uh, we get a lot of questions from our patients uh, with all types of lymphomas uh, about the very exciting progress that we've been able to make and the progress across lymphomas, uh, Hodgkin's lymphomas, non-Hodgkin's lymphomas, We've been very fortunate, uh, us, our patients, and their families, uh, that the progress has really been unparalleled. Uh, we even feel a little guilty sometimes and wish that the progress in other cancers like pancreas cancer uh, and lung cancer could have uh, kept pace. Uh, but we have been very fortunate that for lymphomas, the progress over the past decade has been uh, fantastic. We, we literally have diseases that we used to call incurable, and now we call them partly curable. So uh, it is gratifying to us uh, and extremely uh, rewarding to our patients that some of these new therapies can uh, make people live longer, as importantly, make people have good quality of life. Uh, and as I say, for some of these diseases, um, cure patients of their disease. So hopefully uh, they may have to still see their doctors at some intervals but hopefully never have to deal uh, with these scary things again. Uh, over the past decade, all types of progress, but some of the most exciting progress has been in immunotherapies. Uh, and specifically over the past five years, uh, there are certain types of immunotherapies for non-Hodgkin's lymphomas uh, that have been unparalleled, I would say, in efficacy, uh, and still some of them extremely well tolerated and uh, these things frequently are beloved by our patients because they don't come with some of the toxicities of standard therapies like chemotherapy or radiation therapy. So over the past five years, just to focus on non-Hodgkin lymphomas and the subtype we call B-cell non-Hodgkin lymphomas, and lymphoma discussions are always tricky because there are many, many types of lymphomas. There are more than 70 types of lymphomas and sometimes our patients and their families are Googling about lymphomas, but they're really not learning about the type that's relevant for them. So we're gonna focus just for the moment on B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphomas. And this still includes many types and some of the most common subtypes within there are diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, which we call a um, uh, intermediately aggressive lymphoma. Uh, and some of the more less of aggressive lymphomas, we call them low grade or indolent lymphomas. Common examples are follicular lymphoma, marginal zone lymphoma, uh, and SLL, CLL, all of them uh, are low grade in that they do not grow very quickly. Uh, and some of the patients with those low grade lymphomas don't even require any therapy uh, at the time they get diagnosed. For all of these B cell non Hodgkin's lymphomas, uh, the progress in the past five years regarding immunotherapies has been fantastic in that we have a couple of specific new therapies that have gotten FDA approved and if few that will be FDA approved over the next year or so uh, that will really be transformative for how we take care of these patients. A couple of examples, um, and perhaps one that's gotten the most press and maybe deservedly so, uh, is this type of immunotherapy called CAR T-cells. CAR T-cells, when I describe this to uh, my patients and their families, they think this is science fiction. It sounds like it's straight out of Star Trek, but it's, it's, it's a standard therapy that we give every day. Uh, CAR T-cells, the concept is that we uh, take someone's immune cells, a few of them out of their body. So it's basically like a long blood draw. Most blood draws when we take some blood for a test, you know, it's a five minute blood draw, but this is a long blood draw. It's actually, you sit there for more than an hour giving blood, but you think, wait, I need my blood. Well, we give you back all of the red blood and the parts you need moment to moment, but keep some of the immune cells from their blood draw. The name of this long blood draw is called phoresis or leukophoresis. We take some of your immune cells using this leukophoresis technique, and we literally ship them off to a factory. The factories used to be in Santa Monica. Now there's a few of them. Um, and they take those immune cells and they insert a new gene uh, into these immune cells. And that gene is called a CAR, stands for chimeric antigen receptor. The details aren't too important, but the, that CAR gene teaches that immune cell how to recognize lymphoma cells. So now we have the immune cell, the specific name, we call that immune cell a T cell. We have that T cell, we have that CAR gene, we put a CAR into the T cell, now we call it a CAR T cell. We take those CAR T cells, they're literally sitting in a bag, and they ship them back to the hospital where the patient is waiting. That whole process takes some time. It really can take up to three weeks or so. Uh, so it's not a, an instant or, or very simple thing to accomplish. Uh, it is a little bit complicated, as you can hear, the leukophoresis, the shipping it out, the manufacturing of the CAR T cell, shipping it back. 
And then those CAR T cells are reinfused into the patients to, for full disclosure, it's not quite even as simple as that. There is a little bit of chemotherapy given prior to the CAR T cell reinfusion, but those chemotherapies are fairly gentle compared to some other chemotherapies that our patients are getting. So we give patients some of this gentle chemotherapy, we reinfuse the CAR T cells, and uh, it is, sounds incredibly elegant. It is, but not perfectly elegant. There are still some possible risks after the reinfusion of, the, of those CAR T cells. And the big risk is that as those immune cells are getting excited to kill lymphoma cells, they can get a little bit too excited um, and they start to spit out chemicals as though they were fighting an infection, even though there is no infection. It's just the immune cells getting excited um, because they were programmed to hate these lymphoma cells now. And when those immune cells get too excited, they spit out these chemicals, we call them cytokines. And the consequence is this side effect we call cytokine release syndrome. Sounds complicated. It's mostly just that patients get a high, high fever uh, and they can get low blood pressure. And this happens to, you know, in a significant degree to one out of five patients, but that's still, it can be a dangerous thing. And therefore we have to keep all of the patients in the hospital just to keep a close eye on them for days and days. Patients for this whole process with the chemo, the infusion and the observation uh, could be in the hospital for uh, 10, 11 days uh, on average. Uh, and most patients don't have any of these bad, bad side effects, but some of them do. So that's why we have to keep a close eye on them. Um, in addition to that uh, high fever, low blood pressure side effect, there's another side effect, which is a bit related, which is that during these immune cells getting all excited while they kill lymphoma, um, they can spit out other chemicals that literally make the person get confused um, sometimes we get patients so confused that they can hallucinate weird or scary things. I literally had a patient stand up, uh, get out of bed and start peeing on the wall. Uh, and we said, what are you doing? He said, uh, what, what, this is how you do it. Uh, so it can be a very confusing and weird thing. That sounds funny and it sometimes can be weird, or, uh, but it can also be dangerous. Um, and uh, that we say uh, encephalopathy or neurotoxicity associated with CAR T cells also can happen in a significant degree in one out of five patients, not always the same patients that get the fevers. Uh, so that's part of the observation as well. So while this therapy is in many ways very elegant, it still has some real risks. It's not perfect. Um, and those risks, you know, sort of add to the complexity because we have to keep people in the hospital to keep a close eye on them. Nonetheless, the efficacy of these CAR T cells for all types of these B cell non-Hodgkin's lymphomas, especially diffuse large B cell lymphoma and follicular lymphoma, and one other we didn't mention before called mantle cell lymphoma. All of them can be um, sometimes well treated with uh, other standard chemotherapies, but when those therapies aren't working, uh, these CAR T cells are amongst the most effective uh, therapies. Uh, the vast majority of patients going into remission uh, after CAR T cell therapy, not all patients stay in remission, but just for example, with this aggressive diffuse large B cell lymphoma, uh, people, uh, patients who have uh, not had success with a couple of prior therapies. We used to call those patients incurable with third line therapies and beyond. And even in those incurable patients, it seemed like CAR T cells were now curing 35 or 40%, four out of 10 patients. Um, so that really has been a miraculous you know, revolution in, in how we take care of those patients. So remarkable efficacy, pretty good safety compared to some other types of chemotherapy, but still not perfectly safe. So we have to be aware of it. Thank you.